Namaste. Right now, I'm standing in front of the world's tallest statue. Yes guys, you've guessed it correctly, it's none other than the Statue of Unity. Built on the banks of the Narmada River, this is the colossal statue of the Indian independence activist, Sardar Vallabhai Patel. It has an astonishing height of 182 meters. Today we'll discuss about the cities of Gandhinagar and Ahmedabad. So, let us visit there first, shall we? After the world's tallest statue, we're now standing inside the world's largest cricket stadium, which is in Ahmedabad. With a seating capacity of 1,32,000, this is the Narendra Modi Stadium, named after India's current Prime Minister. So, there's a lot to know and a lot to discuss about Ahmedabad and Gandhinagar. And I'm your host, the god of travel, Mercury, and you're watching YouTube's only geography channel hosted by a god. First things first, let us know where Gandhinagar in Ahmedabad is located. To know more about the climate, demographics, places to visit and some of the famous legends born there. Gandhinagar in Ahmedabad is located in the state of Gujarat, located in western India. India lies in South Asia, surrounded by the Arabian Sea on the west and Bay of Bengal on the east. India shares international border with nine different countries. Pakistan lies to the west while Bangladesh and Myanmar lies to the east. China, Nepal and Bhutan lies to the north. A small border with Afghanistan is shared with the disputed land called Pakistan-occupied Kashmir, which originally belongs to India. The Strait of Manur separates the Indian state of Tamil Nadu from Sri Lanka. Gandhinagar is the capital of Gujarat, while Ahmedabad is the largest city in terms of land area. The district of Gandhinagar is situated in the north-central part of the state. The district of Mahisana lies to the north and west of Gandhinagar. The district of Subarkantha and Arrow Valley lies to the north. Ahmedabad and Kata shares the southern boundary. Talking about Ahmedabad, the district of Ahmedabad shares the northern boundary with Gandhinagar and Mahisana. The district of Kedah and Anand shares the eastern border, while Bhavnagar lies to the south. Surendranagar and Batad lies to the west. Ahmedabad is linked to the Arabian Sea via the Gulf of Kambat. Gandhinagar sits on the western bank of the Sabarmati River. It has an average elevation of 81 meters above sea level with a total area of 81 square kilometers. The Sabarmati River divides the city of Ahmedabad into eastern and western parts. It has a total area of 464.16 square kilometers at an average elevation of 53 meters above sea level. The Sabarmati River is one of the major west-flowing river in India. It originates in Deir Valley, Range, and Rajasthan, and meets the Gulf of Kambat of the Arabian Sea after traveling 371 kilometers in a southwesterly direction. Sardar Vallabhai Patel International Airport is the international airport serving the cities of Ahmedabad and Gandhinagar. Gandhinagar Capital Railway Station is the main railway station of Gandhinagar, while Ahmedabad Junction, serving Ahmedabad is the largest and busiest railway station of Gujarat. The Legislative Assembly of Gujarat is located in Gandhinagar. The High Court of Gujarat is located in Ahmedabad, making it the judicial capital of Gujarat. Gandhinagar Municipal Corporation and Ahmedabad Municipal Corporation are the local administrative bodies of the cities of Gandhinagar and Ahmedabad respectively. Now that you know about the city's location, let me tell you about the city's climate. Gandhinagar and Ahmedabad both has a tropical wet and dry climate with three main seasons, summer, monsoon and winter. The climate is generally hot to severely hot from March to June, when the maximum temperature stays in the range of 36 to 42 degrees Celsius. Yes guys, that's the max range. The minimum range varies from 19 to 27 degrees Celsius during that period. It is pleasant in the winter days and quite chilling in the night from December to February. The average maximum temperature is 29 degree while the minimum is 14 degrees Celsius and the climate is extremely dry. 
the southwest monsoon brings a humid climate from mid-June to mid-September. After the climate, let us know about who are the people that makes up the population of the cities. In the demographics part. Gandhinagar has a total population of 2.92 lakhs with a density of 1700 inhabitants per square kilometer. On the other hand, Ahmedabad has a population of 56.33 lakhs with a density of 12,000 inhabitants per square kilometer. The majority of the people in both the cities identify themselves as Gujarati, with considerable number of Marwari, Sikhs, Marathas and various other castes. According to the 2011 census, Hindus are the predominant religious community in both the cities comprising of 81.56% of the population followed by Muslims, at about 13.51%. Jains, Christians and Sikhs are some of the other minorities. Buddhists fill up the remainder. Gujarati is the most widely spoken language of Gandhinagar and Ahmedabad. Other common languages are Hindi and English. This is the national flag of India, which is also called the Taranga, in Hindi. It is a horizontal rectangular tricolor, of saffron, white and green. With the Ashaka, Shakra, a 24-spoke wheel, in navy blue at its center. It was adopted to be the national flag on 22nd June, 1947, and it became the national flag on 15th August, 1947, on the Indian Independence Day. But the colors of the national flag is highly significant. Starting with, the saffron, denotes renunciation or disinterestedness. Leaders must be indifferent to material gains and dedicate themselves to their work. The white in the center is light, the path of truth to guide our conduct. The green shows our relation to the soil, our relation to the planned life here, on which all other life depends. The Ashaka Chakra in the center of the white, is the wheel, of the law of Dharma. This is the national emblem of India. It was adopted as an official state emblem, on 26 January, 1950. The emblem consisted of a representation, of the lion capital, of Vashaka, at Sarnath, enclosed within a rectangular frame. The emblem is an adaptation of the lion capital, of Vashaka, which is a statue from 280 BC. As a few of you might have already guessed, that the name Gandhinagar was named after, the father of the nation, of India, Mahatma Gandhi. This is India's second planned city, the first being, Chandigarh. Gandhinagar became the capital of Gujarat in July, 1970. Talking about Ahmedabad, it was named by the ruler, Ahmed Shah, the first, who was from the Muzaffar dynasty. Later, it became the capital of Gujarat, when the presidency of Bombay was split into Gujarat and Maharashtra. Ooh. And I think I didn't tell you that I also give you certain historical significance along with geographical facts, so consider pressing the red subscribe button, if you haven't already. Ring the notification bell after that as well. Without wasting more time, let us see some of the most visited places. Starting with probably the most historically significant place in Gujarat, is the Sabar Madhya Shram, located in Ahmedabad. Sabar Madhya Shram is the second home of Mahatma Gandhi. This was the place from where Gandhi orchestrated the final struggle of independence. One can still see Gandhi's personal items like round eyeglasses, wooden slippers, letters and books. Next are the historical mosques of Ahmedabad. Jama Masjid is one of the finest architectural specimen found in the city. This mosque was built by Sultan Ahmed Shah, in 1423 to render the Muslim devotees a place to congregate for the Friday prayers. City Said Mosque, is one of the most photographed monuments, in Ahmedabad. It is situated in the northeast corner of Badr Fort and is famed for its lattice work over yellow sandstone. Reckoned to be the largest lake in Ahmedabad, Kankari Lake is located in the southern part of the city. The lake is an ideal picnic spot for families, as the lakefront has been developed into an entertainment zone, and it has features like a zoo, toy train, kids city, tethered balloon ride, water rides, water park, food stalls and other entertainment facilities. Next, are some of the most beautiful temples in the entire country. The Akshardham Temple, in Gandhinagar, 
is one of the biggest temple in India and it is a major pilgrim destination that many people swarm to. The complex took over 13 years to build in honor of Swami Narayan and his life and teachings. Spanning over more than 40,000 square feet, the Tremander and Gandhinagar celebrates Jainism, Shaivism and Vaishnavism under one roof. The premises of the temple also include an informative museum and a mini theater that shows about the history of these cultures. Androba Dinosaur and Fossil Park is a 400 hectare park on the banks of Sabarmati River. Not only this park is the second largest in the world, but it also houses the skeletons of gigantic mammals like the blue whale. Fun World is an excursion into the adventure packed and excitement filled world of rides and games. Right from thrilling roller coasters like Dragon or Cyan Trooper, to unforgettable experiences like Horror House, Jungle Safari, this place has it all. Named as Adala's Wow, this Adala's Step Well was built in 1499 by Ridibai, the wife of a local chieftain. The Step Well is adorned with beautiful platforms and galleries. The shafts of the well are profusely carved, with floral and geometric motifs, interspersed with a number of figurines. Coming back to Ahmedabad, we head to the Team Darwaza. Situated on the southeast of the Badru Fort, the Team Darwaza or the Triple Gateway, was the entrance to the Shahi Maidan, where the royal processions and polo matches were once held. The old part of Ahmedabad is incomplete without a visit to the Manik Chowk. This is a chaotic square, surrounded by many historical buildings and a bustling multi purpose market. Baba Maninath, Temple, Bad Shano Hajira, Rani no Hajira, Ahmedabad Stock Exchange, and Maharat Pal are all present in the vicinity. Sarkas Rosa, which is a beautiful complex of tombs and pavilions. The complex is built around an artificial lake. Last but not the least, is the Science City, which is an educational center, focused on science and technology. I know that you all are waiting desperately to know about the best foods of Gujarati cuisine. But before that, let me tell you about the currency details of India. Indian rupee is the official currency of India. The foods and drinks of Gandhinagar and Ahmedabad is a part of the Gujarati cuisine. The typical Gujarati thali consists of roti, dal, rice, and shak, which is a dish made up of several different combinations of vegetables and spices, which may be either spicy or sweet. The thali will also include preparations made from pulses or whole beans which is called kather in Gujarati, such as moong, black-eyed beans etc., a snack item or farsan, like dokla, pathra, samosa or fafrana sweet, also called mishthan, in Gujarati, like muhanthal, jalbi, or dudpak. Despite having an extensive coastline providing wholesome seafood, Gujarat is primarily a vegetarian state, due to the influence of Jain vegetarianism. However, many communities such as Kali Patel, Muslim communities and Parsi, include seafood, chicken and mutton in their diet. Let me tell you about some of the important and unique snacks and dishes of Gujarati cuisine. Kakra, Dukla, Kulfi, Dalvara and Maskaban, all have their origin in Ahmedabad. The basic Gujarati Khitri which is also called, Laziza, is a mix of moong dal and rice, cooked with turmeric and soft until soft and runny. A simple, moorish dish, it can be eaten as is, or with accompaniments. To counter the intense heat during the summer, Gujarati cuisine has its own mango refreshment drink, called, Kari Noga Flow. After the delicious foods and drinks, it's time to know about some of the interesting festivals of the cities. One of the most unique festival which takes place in Ahmedabad is the International Kite Festival. Since 1989, Gujarat Tourism has hosted International Kite Festival as a part of the official celebration of Ataraya. The festival brings together master kite flyers and creators from every corner of the world to demonstrate their creations and to decorate the skyline with unusual types of kites. Description of Gujarat festivals is incomplete without the mention of Navaratri. Celebrated for nine long days with huge pomp and show, Navaratri is dedicated to all the nine forms of Goddess Durga. Communities come together to dance in unison during Garba, a seemingly simple dance, where the crowd moves together in a synchronized circular movement. These were some of the most unique festivals. 
But do you know what makes Ameda bad and Gandhinagar much more unique? It's the legends those were born here, who made sure that their birthplace is recognized not only in Gujarat, but also all over the world. So, let us know about some of those legends and their achievements. Sultan Ahmed Shah, who was born in Patan and who was the founder of Ahmedabad. Did you know that Ahmedabad is called, the Manchester of the East? It is due to the efforts of Ranchorlal Shadalal, who founded the city's first textile mill and raised the Gujarati business spirit to a higher level. Angelil Kayeknik was an Indian independence activist and leader of the All Indian Kisan Sabha, which spearheaded the demand for a separate state for Gujarat. Cast her by Lalbai, a textile business tycoon. Also known as the father of the Indian space program, Vikram Sarabhai was an Indian physicist who helped develop nuclear power in India. He was also the founder of IIM and PRL. The women of Ahmedabad didn't lag behind in becoming legends. Raidula Sarabhai, the sister of Vikram Sarabhai was an Indian independence activist and later a politician. Ella Bhatt, was the founder of the Self-Employed Women's Association or SUA. Chef Kesriyazing Hudizing, was one of the richest merchant in Ahmedabad. He built a Jain temple dedicated to the 15th Tirthankara, Dharmanath. Alright, looks like it's time to say you farewell my disciples. But you can still stay connected with me on my Instagram channel. The link of it is given in the description below. And stay tuned. The busy and bustling Ho Chi Minh City is coming up next.